My name is Todd Fetterman. And I'm David Axrod. We both teach economics here at the Feliciano School of Business. At Montclair State University. You may have heard about Shohei Otani, the great baseball player. Some people think he's the best baseball player since Babe Ruth. He just signed a contract over the winter for how much? $700 million. But it's a lot more complicated than that. It's a 10-year contract, but you see numbers here going to 20 years. It covers 10 years of play, but he's going to get paid over a 20-year time period. He's only going to get $2 million a year for the first 10 years, and then $68 million starting in year 11 for 10 years. It totals to $700, but a dollar paid 20 years from now is not worth the same as today. We do something called a present value calculation, where we take the amount that's going to get paid, divided by 1 plus the interest rate, raised to the nth power. Major League Baseball uses an interest rate of 4.43%. So the money that's going to get paid in the future has less present value today. $68 million paid in year 11 is only worth $42 million today because it gets reduced by the present value calculation. Adding up the present value, we end up with a total present value today of about $366 million. Otani wants to know that the money's going to really be there. He's not going to just trust the Dodgers, so they have to put the money away in something called an escrow account, probably with an insurance company. They're required by the contract to put away $43 million for 10 years. We now have a future value calculation where we take the amount and we raise it by the interest rate raised to the number of years. So $43 million is going to have a future value of $66 million when you raise it to the interest rate for 10 years. Each year, the $43 million is going to grow. The escrow is going to grow to about $550 million, and then they're going to start paying him $68 million out of that pile. We add interest to the balance, take away 68, so the number is going to dwindle to essentially zero at the end of year 20. So, David, why does this make sense for Otani? Well, it may make sense for Otani for a couple of reasons. One, this gives the Dodgers more money to hire other excellent ball players because Otani wants the money, but he also wants to win championships and probably not just one. Right. Does it make sense for the Dodgers to do this? Well, they're going to spend two million plus forty-three a year, forty-five million. Right now, if they sell an extra two thousand tickets because he's a big attraction, and the people spend two hundred fifty dollars between um, the ticket and the merchandise, that's five hundred thousand a game times eighty games. That's forty million right there. In addition, we teach the concept of elasticity, which means when you raise prices. Do people buy the same quantity? They can probably charge higher prices to everybody, not just the additional seats they're going to sell. Well, there's inflation. From the standpoint of uh, the Dodgers, they're paying two plus 43 in each of these years. So 45 million, well, you know, you're not going to buy as much in 10 years. So that's actually even even better deal for the Dodgers. It's a much better deal for the Dodgers. The price that they can charge for tickets 10 years from now will be substantially higher. They still owe him only $45 million in payments. So the Dodgers like it. Otani, if it's going to help him get some championships, he likes it. And we're not worried about him only getting $2 million a year because it's estimated he could make as much as $50 million a year um, in endorsements. And 10 years from now, when he starts getting these $68 million a year payments, He's probably going to move to a state that doesn't have a state income tax, or he might move back to Japan, where this may get taxed at a very low level. So everybody likes the deal. It's almost opening day. Play ball.